I was asked five years ago to speak to 3,000 employees of a large grocery store chain. And they brought everybody. After I'd spoken, I always give my home phone number to every audience. I had a young man who called me, and he told me his name was Johnny, that he was a bagger in one of the stores, and he was a person of Down syndrome. He said, Barbara, I liked what you said. And he said he went home that night and he asked his dad to help him with the computer. And he set the com said, we set the computer up into three columns. And he said from that night on, every night that he goes home, he finds a thought for the day. And he said, if I can't find one I like, I think one up. Then he and his dad type it six times on a page. He prints out 50 pages every single night, cuts them out, signs his name on the back, and the next day, for every person's groceries he bags, he puts a thought for the day in the bag. Now, about a month later, the store manager called me. He said, Barbara, I want to tell you what happened this morning. He said, when I went out on the floor about 9.30 this morning, the line at Johnny's checkout was three times longer than any other line. <laughs> He said, I went ballistic. I was yelling, get more people out there, get more lanes open. And he said, the customer said, no, no, we want to be in Johnny's Lane. We want the thought for the day. So who do you think is the most important person in that whole store? He said, one woman came up and said, I only used to shop once a week, but now I come in every time I go by because I want the thought for the day. <laughs> He said, three months later, the store manager called me back again, and he said, Barbara, you and Johnny have transformed our store. He said, now in the floral department, when they have a broken off flower or an unused corsage, we used to just throw them away. He said, now they go out in the floor, and they find an elderly woman or a little girl, and they pin it on them. He said, one of our meat packers loves Snoopy, so we ordered 50,000 Snoopy stickers, and every time he packages a piece of meat, his meat gets a Snoopy sticker on it. Now, I said, I don't know about dog stickers on me. <laughs> but he said, we are having so much fun, and our customers are having so much fun. And folks, that's a true leader. And if he can do it, there is no reason why every one of us in this room and out there in our audiences can't do it. Thank you. God bless. <laughs> Question number one. What percentage of American workers do you think are giving their very best to their jobs? Any thoughts? I hear lots of numbers out there. 12 to 15 percent. 12 to 15 percent. Isn't that sad, folks? We've got 7 to 8 percent who are burned out. Hope that's nobody in the room, have no life. But that leaves 75 to 80 percent of our American workforce just doing enough to get by. Now, I call those people <coughs> slot fillers. They come in, they do their job, they go out the door the minute their shift is up. They're our target audience. How can we inspire those folks to say, I make a difference. I can make a difference every single day. Second statistic, what percentage of American workers told us that last year they got no appreciation at all for the good work they had done. No appreciation. Actually, I thought it would be higher, but 65% got no appreciation. And you know, why would you keep giving your best? Some of us have a work ethic that we do it because it's the right thing to do. But an awfully lot of young people don't have that same work ethic. And so if I'm killing myself day after day after day to make a difference and nobody notices, after a while, a lot of people are just going to give up. From now on, every time you go to a meeting, and it could be, by the way, a meeting in your community or your church or your school or any place, but every time you go to a meeting, ask if you can start that meeting with three minutes of good news Three minutes of good news. And just ask anybody in the meeting, anything good that's happened in their family, in their community, on the job, anything good in the world? Because what are most of your meetings about? What's going right or what's going wrong? Yeah. So you see, if you start all these meetings with what's going right, good news, it will change the whole feeling. 
in your workplace. I guarantee that. I have clients all over the world now who are starting every meeting they have with three minutes of good news. Now, what do you think they're telling me about their meetings? What would you guess? They're much more positive. They're more productive. People are coming on time because they don't want to miss the three minutes of good news. What do you think they're telling me is the hardest thing they have to do? Stop it at three minutes. Exactly. Because once we start focusing on what's going right, it really changes everything. How many of you are willing to give that a shot? This is the most important thing I'm going to share with you. I told you earlier, I'm a hands-on person. I created this little three-column chart for myself about nine or ten years ago because I wanted to be able to see and measure the difference I could make every day. And this is true of every person in this room. It basically says, every interaction that you have with anyone, you have a choice. You can create for that other person a minus, a zero, or a plus. If you discount them, make them feel less important than SCE or yourself, they're going to leave with a minus. If you just take care of their business, and see, that's your slot fillers, it doesn't count to build any kind of loyalty. But every time you make a human level connection, and it doesn't have to be big things, people. It can be using their name. It can be asking them a question about something other than the business. It can be listening with empathy. Any time you make that human level connection, they are going to leave feeling a little bit better because they interacted with you. And that's the choice that you have with every single interaction. Now, you can be good at your job, be a transaction giver, that's your slot fillers, taking care of the business. Or you can be a relationship builder, and that's what all of you in this room are. But how that needs to be transferred out to everybody in the organization. Would you close your eyes for a moment? And I want to end with a thought from a dear, dear friend of mine, Og Mandino. This is his rule number 10 for a better way to live. He says this, beginning today, treat everyone you meet loved one or stranger, friend or foe, as if they were going to be dead at midnight. Extend to each person you meet, no matter how trivial the contact, all the care and the kindness and the understanding and the love that you can muster. And do so with no thought of any reward. Your life will never be the same again. And folks, I hope that you've gotten some things today that your lives will never be the same again. Thank you.